Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome from uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. A beautiful last day of February of 2018. Welcome to our monthly live telecast for peripheral interventions. Uh, we apologize for a delayed start. There was some technical issues, but we are up and running, so uh, we'll go ahead with the live cases. Before we do that, just as a reminder, please log on to our website, ccslivecases.org, to uh, see the broadcast or any archived cases, which will be up for this, uh, for today's session will be up at the end of the week. But any of those previous uh, live cases, you can go into the website, log on, and review any cases, leave comments, concerns, or questions for us. Also, before I uh, head over to the lab, just as a reminder, our annual Link Mount Sinai Conference this year is scheduled from June 11th to all the way through the 13th, which includes an endovascular fellows conference, which is on the 11th, followed by the main conference on the 12th and the 13th, which will be headed by Dr. Schneider and Dr. Krishnan here at Mount Sinai, New York. So please go on to our website, uh, ccvvc.org, and register uh, for the Link Mount Sinai Conference. Uh, without further ado and taking any more time, uh, we'll go to the lab and see what's up uh, with uh, Dr. Guja and Dr. Krishna. Morning, gentlemen. Hi, good morning, Michelle. Well, you know, the, the fault is on our end here. Um, it has nothing to do with the, our, our technical team. It's just we, weren't, uh, we were trying to make some videos run for the talk uh, um, associated with this. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't unable to do that. So what we're going to do is after the case, we're going to give a brief presentation that will be recorded and that will be available um, online for everyone to see. So uh, uh, welcome to the lab. Uh, obviously, we have Dr. Karthi Gujra, who's the, who's the associate director of our, of our program here at Sinai. And then we have Dr. Uh, Ray Lascano, who's our interventional nurse practitioner, and Dr. Singla, our endovascular fellow. Elizabeth, Damien, and Pablo are all here helping us out. So we got a really interesting case view. There was a change from our, um, our advertised case because the patient fell ill with the flu. So we had to bring in um, a, a, a patient who was um, you know, pretty exemplary, but not what we were planning on doing. That's also kind of related to the delay that, that we've been having uh, for, the, for the late start. So without further ado, I'm going to send it to Dr. Uh, Singlet to go ahead and give us the presentation. Morning, everyone. Uh, so we have an 84-year-old lady with a past history of uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, and uh, coronary artery disease. She was evaluated in our clinic uh, with the complaints of uh, less than 100 feet claudication. And for last, uh, about the same time, she also started noticing that she was having pain at night in the right foot, which was uh, relieved with dependency. And this was uh, associated with a dependent rubber. On exam, her uh, vitals were stable, blood pressure 144 by 76, pulse of 64. And she had a monophasic signal on uh, continuous wave Doppler on the right DP and PT. Next. Her labs uh, were uh, pretty uh, normal for her age, hemoglobin of 11, platelets 131, INR of 1.1. She has a creatinine of 1.85. Uh, we did an ABI as an outpatient, and she had a uh, right ABI of 0 0.46 and a left of 0 0.68. We also had an arterial duplex, I'm sorry it's not uh, up on the screen, and it showed the evidence of occlusion in the right AT and the PT mid-segment. Uh, we're going to show the angios after we go live. Yep, so, so we, we wanted to show you the angiogram, so I'm just going to uh, scroll back. She had normal iliacs uh, uh, that we had done prior to uh, preparing her for this live case, and so we just took uh, uh, pictures from the SFA. So, so this lady uh, essentially is presenting with rest pain, which what sound to me with an ABI that possibly is multi-level disease. But you can see here that this young lady has um, uh, patent SFAs with reasonable flow, a patent common femoral and patent iliacs. She has some uh, diffuse disease in the, um, in the distal SFA, mid-distal SFA. And the popliteal also has some diffuse disease. But however, the real fun starts uh, right below the popliteal. You can see here right after the popliteal, the anterior tibial artery occludes. The posterior tibial artery also occludes. The perineal artery seems to be the dominant vessel. Very, very slow flow coming down in the perineal artery. You can see here, there's the perineal slowly coming down. Uh, kind of suggestive of why her symptoms are bad. You can see distal, the perineal gives very slow collaterals to the posterior tibial. And also in, in, the, in the level of the foot, you, you can see that, that this is a delayed image. You can see the perineal showing the anterior and posterior communicating artery filling both the, um, the, uh, the anterior tibial and the, and, the, and the posterior tibial in the foot. So I think, I think excuse me, stepped on the floor. I think that this is a, a, a great example 
um, of a patient uh, with rest pain with complex CTOs below the knee. And uh, you know, Dr. Guja, myself, uh, uh, Vishal, we're, we're talking about you know what are the what are the things that we can really discuss in this case. And um, you know, I thought a good topic for discussion would be you know the approach to these kind of cases with these complex CTOs. And uh, you know, I'm just going to briefly talk about what what we're going to do currently. So so let me talk about what I do, and then we'll go to Dr. Guja, and then we'll go to you, Vishal. Uh, you know, what 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 our approach at Sinai is really anti-grade wire escalation. I mean, I mean, what, what, what we tend to do in these kind of cases is go ahead and set up uh, with, with, with a catheter uh, at the level of the popliteal artery for support, and then, and then we start doing wire escalation. Couple of things that, that I, think, I think all of you at home can start to look at is, is to look at the angiogram of the vessel, okay? Now, you, you know that it, was, it wasn't osteally occluded. It had, it had a beaking anatomy, which makes it favorable for, for you to go ahead and enter. But when you start interrogating the angiogram carefully, I think, I, I, I think, I, uh, any reason why, any reason why her, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here, well, I just want you guys to do a dry cine run of, of her foot, of her leg. And, and if you do a dry cine run of her leg on the high mag, what you're gonna start to look for is possible calcification, right? So, so here I'm gonna just set it up in a manner that, that at least we can see. And then what I wanna do is just look at where the anterior tibial artery is running. So there's my wire, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna see if there's any favorable spots that's gonna allow me to see the anatomy of the, of the uh, anterior tibial and dorsalis pedis. When, I, I think this is a good habit to get into when you start uh, doing a CTOs below the knee. The reason is, uh, you know, it gives you sort of a, a, a angiographic roadmap for you to be able to assess. The second thing we look at here is, you have to understand that there's gonna be areas of hibernating myocardium. When, when you start to look at your, 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 your runoff, you can, see, you, you can see basically that the perineal artery comes quickly. You need to learn from your angiogram. The perineal artery comes very quickly. The posterior tibial artery comes very quickly. The anterior tibial artery, you don't really see it. You see a bony artifact, and you don't see, really see much filling, maybe a little island in that area, which may or may not be true. So, so the point is, what you're going to face when you go in with these is, is you're going to face areas of, of occlusion followed by areas of hibernation. So that you have, to, you have to understand. So you need to choose your wires properly. So generally speaking, what, what, what our technique of wire escalation, which I'll go over in the lecture, is basically to divide the wires into five categories. So, so you, 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 have a, you have a slippery wire, you have a supportive wire, you have, you, and, and, and you have a sharp wire, okay? So you, you, can, you, can, you can divide it into safe, slippery, supportive, and sharp. So your safe wires are gonna be the basic wires that you're gonna be able to use for any sort of lesion. Your BMWs, you divide it into 014, 018. So I'm just gonna give you a general overview of what, what our approach is. Then, then are your slippery wires, you're gonna be a hydrophilic coated wires, generally are able to get through tortuous anatomy as well as find uh, subindimal channels in, the, in these types of lesions. Third is going to be your supportive wires such as your wires in which after you've crossed, you're, you're gonna have a lot of support to be able to do your intervention on. And finally is your sharp wires, which are really your penetrating wires. So what, I, what we do is we look at the angiogram here and say, what type of wire do we see? So say you see an immediate chunk of calcium at the proximal SFA and the die go, I mean, um, tibial and the die goes and stops antegrade right at the level of that calcium. Now, would it be prudent to choose a slippery wire in that case? Likely not. I think in that case, you wanna choose a, a sharp wire to penetrate the cap and then possibly switch out to a slippery wire. I think that's very, very important to make that the distinction and also is also a cost savings. You can't always be right in these cases, but in this case, we don't see much calcium at all, as you saw by that angiographic, uh, dry angiography run that we did. And so what we decided to do was to go with the slippery wire. Second, supportive catheters. You have 018 supportive catheters and 014 supportive catheters. The 018 supportive catheters are good if you have a heavily calcified lesion and you know that you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do wire escalation from going from an 014 to an 018 wire. But in this case, we don't see much calcification. So I'm anticipating that I probably will not need to go to an 018 wire, but we don't know. But I think you, you can use the angiogram to predict. 
Now, I know I've been talking for a long time, so I, I just want to tell you what we're doing now. We're going to start with the 014 fielder wire as our slippery wire, and or, and or you can use the command. I think this is the fielder. And we're going to go with a caravel catheter, which is a support catheter. We'll turn it over to Karthik and Vishal about in terms of whether it's the access points that you need and, and what, are, what are the other things that they may do differently. Karthik? Yeah, I don't <coughs> sure, okay. no, I, I did exactly like PK did. I mean, PK summarized it, I mean, phenomenally. I don't think anybody can summarize it much easier than that. Um, I, we always start with uh, um, hydrophilic wires and then escalate the wires. Uh, I think, uh, Vishal, uh, if I understand you better, I think you do the same thing. Access is the issue. I mean, I, uh, we always give it a sh I always give it a shot from anti-grade uh, fashion. I either choose the anti-grade axis or go up and over. Depending on the Eliax, uh, if I need a lot of support, I go anti-grade. If I don't need that much support, if I feel like I, I don't need that much support, I just go with a long sheath uh, up and over. I reserve retrograde fashion as our pedals uh, only if it's really necessary and I'm not uh, if unable to cross from below, uh, from above. Um, I don't reserve, I don't do pedals first. Uh, that's never been my scenario. What do you think, Visha? Visha? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, You're okay. a little bit low on the... Right. So, no, I think, uh, like you rightly said, I mean, it was very well put down by PK to summarize how you would want to choose your wires depending, depending on the anatomy and the angiographic assessment. So, and again, we all, most of our practice is based on anti-grade approach, which is up and over in this case. Some okay. people do like pedal first access. They think pedal is the new radial, which can be debated about depending on the situation. But in this case, like we said, probably do a selective uh, uh, access, like you would probably get a micro catheter down and then try to inject to see how angiographically selectively AT looks. And depending on uh, how it looks, we choose our wires and we take it from there. And uh, like PK again said that most of them, is, it's a combination of islands of CTOs and hibernating where you have these micro channels. So you might start with a little bit of hydrophilic wires, try to find your way through as much as you can. And when you hit this island of CTO, which is probably a calcium, then you probably switch over your wires to, That's like right. he described, the sharp or the support, depending on how it is. And uh, we try to cross the lesion. But it's a great uh, asset to have, especially doing below the knee so interventions yeah, for people sure. who want to build up a CLI, ulcer, limb salvage practice. I think uh, it's, it's great. And I guess if you can look at angiographically right now, we're going live, how with nice so, finesse and so the wires. Michelle. I hate to interrupt you. I'm sorry. You saw there what, what I was talking about. The wire went smooth proximally. Right. We had an area of occlusion where the wire, again, had trouble. We bought the Caraval support catheter. I didn't see any it. And then, and, then, and, then, and then we went down. I don't know, I don't know if you can do fluorosave. We didn't do fluorosave. No, we didn't. So, 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 therefore, at this site right here was where we had that bend. And that's what Dr. Guja immediately commented, that that bend was kind of odd in the way that it went. And I think part of that reason is because of the fact that you have this uh, uh, weird bend, which is likely the area of calcium, and you might be subintable there. So it's important for you to or learn. Or fibrosis. Or fibrosis, exactly. So, so again, we're going now with the, with the supportive wire. You can what see wire area. are you using? We're using just a fielder, and that's the okay. point. See, just a little fielder, a little bit of you know, a little bit of not really pushing, but a fine touch. Can you bring the uh, the uh, slave monitor on this side, please, guys? Um, slave monitor. There. So, so we're just gonna try. We already have Trevor's three quarters of it. Can I have a little wet one, please? So, what? So, the, the, this is the area. Thank you. I got it ready. The, this is the area where we may need to switch to a uh, a more supportive wire. And all I'm doing is just spinning the fielder uh, the way we always cross these lesions. And at this stage is where the real cap is. And I'm kind of okay with that. I'm just gonna keep going. See, uh, and this is the area where people are, are get a little bit worried about where the wire is going, where it's not going. And the whole point here is not to worry about that, just kind of keep going. You can't make an occluded vessel worse. So, okay guys. So can you can you come down and show me the foot here, Karthik? Okay. Okay, let's go DSA. What do you say? Start a nitro drip, please. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure is 230. We'll start a drip and control it. So you can see here we're coming along. That's the posterior tibial. 
and I'm looking for areas of hibernation. You see, you saw that that final area of hibernation right there. Do you see that? Right. Just now, now this is important at, so, at some point to go ahead and give uh, give some dye to figure this out. Obviously, we have a very high blood pressure here. We just need to get it controlled. Uh, this is a very complex patient with multiple disease, uh, and and we, and we need to do this. So uh, they're trying to keep her calm, and so. We're just going to go ahead and uh, keep moving here with this wire, try to get through. So you saw that island of hibernation, uh, Vishal and Karthik. I think that's important. And here, this is where you want to aim for that island of hibernation. And you may need a more uh, 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 sharp wire picking. here. So I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to ask for a sharper wire. So now we're going to go with the Fielder XT. So we're still staying in the hydrophilic family, and we're going to go down into, into, into a lower lower level of, uh, of, uh, of wire, I mean, in terms of crossing profile, but yet this Fielder XT is going to have the ability to find these fenestrations to be able to get through. Now, do you guys do anything different in terms of what, what's your threshold for pedal access, uh, Vishal? No, I, I guess, I mean, at least, uh, like you said, just try escalating your wire technique. If you start going a lot of sub plane or you created a lot of plane dissection and you're like mm -hmm. stuck in there, then probably switch over to the real axis. But most of the times, if you escalate faster, and my, my old technique is, I mean, not that time should be a limit, but three to five minutes if you're not making any progress, like there in this you. case, fielder is not going anywhere, you quickly try escalating your wires up and see how it responds. But if you create a lot of uh, dissection anti-gradely and not getting back into the lumen or going a lot of sub then I switch over to a pedal axis if need be. So I think the problem here also is the fact that, uh, you know, we're with an 014 system, and it's one of the fine coronary CTO systems called the Caravel. And uh, you know, for those of you vascular surgery and radiology, you know, it's not something that's very commonly used probably in your world, but clearly it's, it's something that, 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 that will be very useful. Oh, I just had a little pop there. There it goes, see that? So let's, let's go down now. Now again, you know, it's again, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going here because I kind of like my pat. Oh, I don't like it there. Just when I was getting all excited, Karthik had to throw throw so, water water under my sail there, you know. So uh, let me ask you this: Are you? Uh, some people are concerned. Would you use a longer sheet, like a ninety centimeter, to go just okay. to, all the way down to the SFA to give yeah. you support? Yeah, no, no, you can. I mean, that's a great point. Ready DSA? Okay, guys, something. I need some help here. Can somebody? Your DSA? Okay, mamita. We seem to be pretty good. Yeah, right there, always. The oh. wire is pretty free, right? The wire was pretty free, I think we crossed it. Yeah, you know, you know I, think, I think this is the idea. The whole idea, Vishal, if you see that, you can even go a little further here right. and look for our target, right? So let's do it there. I think that'll be yeah, great. We can, we, can, we can just inject again. And you will see here when we do the target, right, how it looks. Um, and, and you can see here, as, the, as, the, as it comes, you see there's the target in the, in, the, in the distal that you can see, and there's a little bit of retrograde feel. You can see the competitive flow there, and you see the very sliver of the dorsalis pedis becoming the anterior tibial artery. Right. So, so, you know, we didn't go with a sharp wire, and a lot of people would have probably just switched right over to a sharp wire. What I did was I stayed hydrophilic. And, and, you know, it's almost counterintuitive where people say, well, you know, fielders is a nice steerable wire, but it's not a good CTO wire in these type of cases. And I think the truth is also it, it applies to the command wire, where the command wire also has this kind of situation. So you can see here, now we're, we're, we're going to be going into this. And again, all I'm doing is just little spinning. And you can see what Dr. Guja was saying. The wire is moving smoothly, right? There's the wire moving smoothly. There you go. Now you know I'm in, guys. Right. The and now, now we are in the true vessel in, what, five minutes? And even though, even though I delayed, we're able to, unlike Dr. Guja, stay on time. So, so you can see here that, that, that here now, now I'm just going to advance my caravel, uh, caravel in to get my safe catheter. And obviously it's not moving. Let me see above, brother. So let me see if I can get the caravel any further. And unfortunately... No, it's not going to go. So this is a very common scenario now. Now show me above. Show me below me. Let me get the wire buried a little bit more. So this is a very, very common. 
Okay, what is she not now the Lord in the cabeza? So what I'm going to do is just place this in deep in my posterior, t in my anterior dorsalis pedis artery, and then I'm going to walk out my my uh, my catheter. So now I, I'm I'm well deep within this vessel. The question is, how are we going to cross? So there's multiple different options. How do you guys deal with this problem, which is likely a more common problem, right, in terms of how we deal with this? How do you deal with this in these kind of cases? Your wires cross, your catheter is not crossing. I escalate the balloons as Go ahead, usual. Dr. Gujar. I, I start with a smaller balloon. Vishal, I think, I, uh, I don't know how you do it, but I start with a smaller balloon, escalate the balloons. Uh, I try not to cause, because I think we are pretty much mostly intimo, except probably some areas of islands. So I think I, I would like to keep the dissection planes as limited as possible. So I think for the patency, start low with a smaller balloon and then keep and then keep going, escalating up your balloons. What do you do, Vishal? No, yeah, I think that, that's the correct strategy. You start with a smaller size and a relatively smaller length balloon to cross over, see how it goes. Start with over the wire preferably, and worst case, even if the over the wire doesn't transmit. Then I sometimes switch over to a coronary rapid exchange system, which actually is a little bit more lower profile than a regular same size peripheral balloon. And you can try to create a path and then switch over, switch back to either a support okay. catheter or a little, little bigger balloon. So yeah, exactly. It's balloon escalation, smaller size, smaller length. Yep. Try to go across and see how if it goes so, through. So yeah, so that one option is that. Can we and get another nurse in here? Okay. The 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 second option will be to go ahead and and do. A, a another kind of catheter such as a laser. Right. So generally speaking, you know, I'm not sure whether this did this did not cross because of the of the fibrosis around the vessel. So I think what you and Dr. Guja are saying is that you have a lot of resistance to the pushability of the balloon, Correct. Uh, pushability of the catheter because of the fibrosis around the uh, uh, the catheter. So so t typically in the coronaries. If the caravel catheter won't cross, you need to do a rotoblader, you need to do some other procedure in order to do it. Here in the peripheral, what we've learned is, over the years, that that's not necessarily true. What we've learned is that, that the, there's a lot of tight fibrosis around with, from the point where you're pushing to where you're transmitting the actual uh, push into, into the catheter. So therefore, it's important now to go ahead and balloon the track. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? What's going on now? Okay. So the, our blood pressure, just for the audience, the blood pressure was out of control. She had not taken her morning medications. So with that blood pressure, she was getting, she has known coronary disease. She was getting a little bit of uh, chest pressure, which is now getting relieved with nitro as well as uh, with some beta blockers. As you can imagine, you know, this is important to have a good team in place when you're doing these complex cases, you know? There you go. So now that we're crossed, now I'm just going to follow what we talked about. Now remember, it's important because it's, I'm not so worried about losing wire position here. I'm more worried about my wire going in because it's a CTO type wire here. Sure. It's a CTO type wire to go ahead into a branch in, in the foot. So now I'm just going to push and everything that's happening above, I'm going to know when this wire moves. I don't need to go low mag, nothing. If this wire comes back, like it just did, that means I'm having resistance to movement. So show me above now, Karthik. So now I'm going to take a look at how far I've made it. I've only made it this far. This is a good place to balloon. So we're going to go ahead and balloon this. And this is where you can either go with a laser or go with multiple therapy. I believe our laser size, which is going to be, go up, is going to be our final therapy, uh, is going to have to be a little bigger than the 0.9. So therefore, I, I, I don't want to open two lasers in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the balloon. And then, and then go ahead and open it down. So this is just a coronary balloon. And I think a lot of times people worry about, you know, go up again. Yeah, I go up top, yeah. So a lot of people worry about going with peripheral balloons versus coronary balloons. You want to have the best crossing profile possible. And there's no question that the coronary balloon has a better crossing profile than any peripheral balloon. So, so I think it's important when you're doing complex below the knee work that we have these high, these uh, very wonderful crossing profile balloons such as this. Now, I did choose a 30, which is obviously a less crossing profile than say a six, but however down, I think that it's important to get as much of this vessel open as possible. I'm gonna go down a little bit now. Yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some speed. I wanna, sh I wanna go ahead and get some speed and try to 
Jer jerk it forward. Which, which, which? Nope. No, 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 there no, no, it goes. Yes. So now wire came back, and that's okay. That's really okay. Believe me, I know I can cross this. So, so that's that's out there down. So now Dr. Gujo was able to open it. Now I may get a little bit of wire purchase down below. Show me below, guys. So I'm gonna just be very carefully twerking this wire and and getting it in. Okay, there you go. Now the wire is a little bit further. Now again, I'm just gonna give some little fingertip pressure, right? Try to get it down, right? Stay there, Pekin. I'll go up again. There it goes. See that? A little bit of love. Go up there. Oh, no. See? So what happened there? She said, I. So what that means is likely we may have a perf because of that movement of that wire and how it bowed out. Como esta, mamita? Okay? Duele ahora? Okay, lo siento. Go up. In la leg? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some intimal stretch down. Also give some pain. Mejorando? Mejorando, mamita? Pequeño? Go ahead. Okay, down. Yeah, she's going to feel this. Give me a 2 long balloon, guys. A 2 2 2015 long balloon. Hold on, Karthik. Let me get down. Don't go up. Yeah, no, I'm not going. Yep. I'm just giving you uh -huh. deflation. So. Yeah. Let's go up with the balloon here. Okay, down. Okay. Okay. Lower down the night road a little bit. Yeah. You can keep it low. Oh. oh. So, so would, would you have to take an angio to see if, like you were talking about perforation or any of those concerns? Do you do it now? Do you do it later? What, what do you, what do you, I mean, I'm sure you're starting thinking Can I have a side, caravel catheter, guys? Uh, what's going on with the uh? pain, if it was just opening of the vessel what's, or what's just uh, any other uh, complication associated with it? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a very good question, Michelle. I think that, you know, with, uh, with perforations, these patients will definitely respond. You know, she, like Dr. Gu just said very nicely, she felt the stretch of the vessel. Right. And also, I didn't like the fact that the wire wasn't supportive enough, and it was, it was, it was bowing as well. So, so I think that part of that is just that. If she was actually truly perfed inside the, the AT she'll right now, she'll be having a lot more pain. Yeah, she'll have constant pain, right, Vishal? I mean, if it's a perf, she would have constant pain. But as soon as the balloon went down, her pain went away. Yeah, I it's think probably I guess just the, the intimal stretch. You right. Know? I guess the biggest issue is uh, differentiating between opening of a vessel which is chronically occluded because of fibrosis versus having an acute uh, event yeah. like we talked about perforation. So. Mm -hmm. And like PK said, early identification is the real best therapy of preventing uh, I, I issues it. down the lane. So, yeah. Show me I, this if anybody is concerned, they could probably do a quick DSA to make sure everything looks fine. You might not see. I much don't. Flow. I really don't think you're going right. to see much if you do DSA here, just because your your flow is so bad, and, so you're, bad. and you're still occluded distally. True. So I think what we're going to do is just try to get this down and switch out for a safe wire. Uh, after we get the safe wire there, we should be we should have no problem being able to uh, at least see wait, what's wait, going wait, on. Wait, I know, wait, I'm just trying wait, to see what goes. Wait, there it goes. Wait, 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 wait. A little bit there of Jimmy. Is. A little bit of Jimmy is what we need, but this Jimmy is not working in this area. Uh, the nice thing about the Caravel is you're going to be able to support. torque it. But I think the way it did, there should be not that much of a lesion. But distally, you didn't have I, much I think issues. it's a diffuse lesion there. Uh, so I think that's what's giving us the trouble. That well, might be the, the area where... Yeah, yeah, I have it. Pull it. I have, I'm pulling it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's not going. So the one thing I could also try to do is use a better coronary supportive wire like a, give me a run through here, guys. So again, or, I don't think this particle will go. How about no, a, command a command wire? Let me try a command. Support. Let me try a command yeah, 014. Wire. Let's try a command 014. It's got a better body than, uh, than a run through. So again, right. I think this is a good example of the wire escalation where, where you're using wires to do this. Now we've gotten down to this part. The reason we haven't been able to cross is because of the fact that we don't have any support right. um, of our catheter above. So, and so now, now, now we're starting. And that's where my question What's regarding, that? and that's where my question regarding the long sheets comes into play. Do you would you ever consider using a 90 centimeter parking it into the distal SFA? I think to that's give a you phenomenal a idea. I think I think a lot of times you can do the mother daughter technique by having a long sheet through that long sheet putting a, putting a 
putting a, for instance, a 90 centimeter sheet through that, putting a five French a diagnostic uh, or, or, or a catheter, and then through that, putting a, a uh, what is it called, uh, a um, supportive catheter, 018 and then an 014. So you can definitely do all that stuff if you'd like. Yeah, there's no question about it. I think a lot of the people use anti-grade uh, sticks also. Right. So uh, that's another to get more support. Uh, people think uh, doing pedal first, like retrograde, might actually be a good idea to do this. You get better ballooning and everything support. But I feel like uh, retrograde, you have higher grades of fistulas. To enter the vein, it's much. Uh, uh, don't, don't put it back. Okay, that's the that's the area of yep. CTO, no? Yep. So there's the command pops through, like we said. All right now let's see whether we can get this down with a little bit more speed. What's amazing is that the Caravel catheter is so hydrophilic and it's still not going. Look at this. I think it's amazing. Just, I All right, give me a balloon, a 2 -oh balloon. Right. I've got a safer wire down there, although command to me is not the safest. Give a 1520. No, no, give a 1520. Yeah, we can try a 1520. So this is a good one, good idea to try, but I don't know if it's going to go. Caravel didn't go. I don't think a 1520 will go. Give us a, give us a, just a, a 2020, another 2020 balloon, please. Try an anacross, PK. I don't think an anacross will go. Give me a coronary balloon. Coronary. Yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. An anti yeah, approach gives you more pushability as well. I guess it's just the management of the groin which one has to deal with. But otherwise, anti approach is a good approach like Dr. Gu just suggested. So once we've ballooned this, this distal cap, I'm still not happy with the support I'm getting with this command wire. I think we definitely have to switch it out to a, to a bigger one. Ray, set up the, uh, the laser. What size laser do you want to do? Point. Huh? Point 0.9 is fine. You want to do point 0.9? Point what about so. you, Vishal? No, I agree. I mean, I would probably do point 0.9 in this Only case, because the diffuse disease and right. everything in the distal, distal area, and she had pain when we ballooned. Okay. So we'll size, go with the point 0.9 laser. Yeah. Ray will set that up, get that ready. I think that pay, that area where we she had the pain, we are a little bit on the dissection plane on the eccentric really? side. Right. So I think uh, using a larger, yeah, I have it. So I think we'll, we'll get uh, larger burr might create a perf. Right. There. So we'll get decent uh, luminal gain with yeah. the laser, and then we can uh, complement it by using a, a balloon. You can go up to a two five if you think it's yep. such a big vessel, and then we take it from there. Same problem. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just see serial dilatation. Yeah, go up here. Do yeah, just balloon, the wire push, balloon, one. push, I yeah. guess. Floor. Uh -huh. Floor. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. More, more, more. That's good. Show me above. Yeah. Don't, don't okay, push let's go up here. Dilatation. So we're going to do again more serial dilatation. Maybe that's the reason we're not getting any pushability. Go up here. So this is a 2 -oh coronary balloon? 2 -oh coronary balloon is just going to go to 8. Eight down. Pull back and push. Uh, and I think this is where the mother-daughter technique will help uh, um, what you're saying, Vishal. I think in this spot here, having a more supportive catheter uh, or, or thing right down there would really help down. Right here. It's pretty much like breaking a distal cap. You just yeah, have to you know, run. like we said, we're all over the place with this wire trying to get through. And then now let's see whether it's the, the negative, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Wow. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think you're there, Piki. Just balloon go once. But I think you, you got to wait. There it is. You got to wait for me to get, uh, push it before you go up. Down? Yeah. There it popped through, so. Yeah, it looks like it popped through there. Okay. Go up here. You can see it's very fibrotic, Michelle. Yes. Down. Right. Dolor. That's the area of uh, significant yes, stenosis. Yes, that's the distal cap for your uh, vessel and the CTL. So. Pain in her leg. Okay, down. Yeah. You want to go up? Yeah, one more. Hold on. Does it pass through or is it still stuck? Uh, it's still stuck. Let me uh, take it out. Give me the 2015. A lot of pain? Floor? And the arm, okay. All right. Okay. 
So part of the issue is, you know, you just want to go go down and go up. I mean, you know, the the uh, the 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 thing here was just illustrating how that ability to push this forward helps. So what we're going to do now is just go with a one five balloon down below, and then go ahead and see whether we're able to get through. If not, if this won't go, this is the last part of the cap. We might just use a, a, a laser. laser now right. to try to pop it and then go forward. Ray, you prepared nine. the laser? I have it. One five ready? I mean point nine? Okay, great. Thank you. I think point nine laser is reasonable enough to Oh wire wire? Yeah, I have it. I have no, it. you didn't have it, it I went forward. Uh, still there. Yeah. Show me above. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. Above. You want to take this? Uh, yeah, why wow. don't you go up here? We'll try again. Again, we're not able to get through that last part. So get the laser ready, guys. Go forward. Okay. Let me see the whole balloon before you go up. So it's very important to see the balloon before you go up because if you have a lot of bowing of the balloon, you may, you may rupture the vessel um, uh, in a bad way. So. Uh, I don't like the way that balloon looks. Let me let me push the wire. Again, Karthik, you gotta wait for me because yeah, you're going up. Yeah, with the, we're going up. Yeah, what I'm yeah. asking you not to. Flora, show me down, please. You want to advance the wire out. Get the support now. Now show me above, please. So what I'm doing is I'm just straightening the balloon. Now go up, please. So there's a one five two zero to balloon the track again. Right. So sometimes what you could do, or I would probably do, is like you said, use a one five. But I would probably switch over to a one five coronary balloon, exactly. like an apex push or something, just to like you said, to break that last fibrotic strand which is hanging there, yep. exactly. and not letting a balloon, these balloons go down. So what are you at ten here? And then, but laser light mm -hmm. is, is a I'm great a option. So okay. definitely either of them down? should be used. Let it come down. So I think part of it is also being patient, letting the balloon deflate, Flora. And then you want to try to get this down further. No, try it's not again. going. All right, yeah, let's no. walk this out. You want to try it there again? No, it's not good. Uh, you can go up here if you want, but I don't think it really matters. I think this, this is going to be a laser. Yeah, I think laser is your best option. Maybe. I think very fibrotic. Ten. Down. Down. Okay, mama, finito. We'll push the wire down. The wire is pretty far down. Okay, walk this out, please. Yeah. So now we're going to set the laser up. Um, so if, if you want to talk about the setup of the laser, you know, two things you need. Obviously, you have to have a dialless field. Okay, so it's important. Uh, and what we generally do is have a flush associated with the side port and are flushing through. The, the bottom line here is that, is that this is not going to be in a, the laser to actually um, you know, treat the whole vessel. So what we're going to do is get it down to that distal area and then do laser just of that distal cap at 0.9, you know, and then take it at the 0.9. And after which we're going to go ahead with a, a 2.5, uh, a 2.0 balloon again, all the way down. So give me another uh, uh, coronary 2.0 balloon, guys. Yeah, we'll start it, we'll start here, 40-40. So, Vishal, what settings of the laser do you like, and can you explain how the laser settings work? Well, I, I mean, I usually start with the lowest setting. So, usually they recommend 2040 or 3060, depending on uh, the catheter size. If, if you have a laser setup and you have, if you're using it first time, I usually recommend having a rep in there because they have an actual a chart. We can go from the pulse and the frequency, and depending on the power and energy you need and the catheter size, you can actually match it to the uh, box rep. right up there. So yeah. in these cases, uh, we start on a lower side, lower frequency, lower power. Okay. Wait and a if second. you think it's not uh -huh. breaking through, we Wait just go up to 30, to Let me open 30, uh, 30, 60, 40, yeah. 80, Thank and then go higher up because you want to deliver your energy and sometimes a lower energy can work. In well, this can case, you, can it's, you it's describe? Local. Can you describe to everybody the difference between the fluency and the rate? Well, fluency is the energy that is uh, delivered through the, the laser technique and the rate is the rate at which it delivers, the number that's of good. cycles it goes per second. That's so that's why you have a fluency and a rate uh, combination in, uh, in okay, laser. Ready? And here, as you can see, they're using the 0.9 laser, and that's yep. the tip of the laser yep. where it is. 
So, <laughs> yeah. yep. Sorry. So uh, we start with the lowest and then go up. What are you using, PK, right now? 30 30. Vishal. Okay. So you, again, like PK said, you go slow. It's uh, energy delivery, usually, like they recommend, one centimeter per second, uh, enough for radiation uh, with the flush on to deliver your energy uh, intraluminary. And here, so you can laser is passing. And uh, I guess we'll see how it looks after that. Stop. Okay. A little more. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Get down. Let's do it again. Let's go to 40, 40, Flora. Do you have any wire specific no, preferences for laser PK? Um, no, generally I just go, I go with it, which, whichever wire. You need a supportive wire. Go, 40, 40. Go. 40, 40. So Vishal, I start with 30, 30 below the knee usually. And then I go up to go up serially. I usually never go more than 45, right. 50. That's the max. 60 I go max. I, I the pulse rates. Uh, I guess I'm the I don't know. I always feel Off. concerned. One more time, 60, 60, 4. I don't know what PK thinks. PK has already given his answer of 60, so 60, you know 60. what he yeah, thinks. On. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. But I think, yeah, PK. sometimes it's right. You know, we tried our serial balloon dilatation, and if you're thinking of using laser early on, then it's probably better to go in, save time, and save on a few mm -hmm. balloons. I don't know how much cost difference that's going to make. But we were you going to use laser or any atherectomy anyway, so I guess it served both our purposes of doing an atherectomy as well as breaking through the distal cap. So laser, otherwise that way works great below the knee as well in these cases. Off. Pika, let me ask you this question: How often do you use laser to break the proximal cap? Um, we've done it, but not often. Let, let's go up again. Start again. Um, I no. I use it. Uh, if it's really calcified and I have a problem really getting, I, I, if I think that the support is not get, uh, going down, off, and I'm not able to push it through. So, so if you notice, I hit that distal cap right. three times just because I felt that that was difficult. Give me, give me a 2 0 uh, 30 uh, coronary balloon, please. Give me a 2 30 coronary balloon. I want the coronary balloon here. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, no, 2 2 0. Yep. Yeah, we that's used good. It that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's a loop. It's a loop. You think your uh, 202 two two is fine? Your 202 is fine. Okay. Your 2015 long won't go now? I don't okay. think it'll go. Okay. I'm not as confident with the peripheral balloons as you are. <laughs> I, I really believe in these kind of cases when it's so far away, you want to go with a coronary balloon to try to be able to get it all the way down. Right. So remember, we started the case at 830. It's already not, it's 9.05 and we've already crossed. So, you know, this is like, a, a, again, just by selection of the wire and having a great team, you can see here that you can do this very, very quickly. So now I'm gonna go back on pressure, right? So this way, at least we can see where we are. I'm done with the laser and, I'm, and now I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get everything ready and go down. Now, all I wanna do is balloon that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm immediately gonna ask for a, 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 a 2.5, uh, a 2530 three three balloon right. long because I know that my distal dorsalis pedis is 25. One of the things I've also noticed, Vishal, is that the, uh, there's a lot of undersizing of these balloons being done. And, uh, you know, this is something I, I really think is a problem because the maximal luminal gain is what's going to relate to, you know, how your, your, it's going to result, result in less recoil, which is and also going to result in. Also, the patency of the vessel. The patency time. of the vessel. No, I, uh, see, it's normal, it's la medicina. Right. No, I completely agree. I guess people get very conservative and they go like small size balloons. But you're absolutely right because especially we try to avoid stenting unless yeah, we really have right to. Again? So we should there actually go. get good Let's patency go. okay. results by doing good PTA, yeah. which is mm -hmm. good sizing, I guess, is the primary goal. Okay. So now you go up. So we're just going to go up and balloon that distal area where we had trouble. Beautiful. So you can see, just go to nominal, just go to 10. You can see, Vishal, the down balloon looks so small for the distal yeah. vessel, no? Right. Go up here. Down. All right, two, two, five, three, oh, now. Down, please. I am, I am, I am, it's just 
right, now I just opened that up. Now I'm happy. Now I'm gonna go with a 2530. Do you have, for lower, below the knee, do you have any preference of using scoring balloons like Angio Sculpt or Chocolate versus a regular PTA? I mean, I think, I think those are good balloons. I think in this kind of CTO cases, you know, <clears throat> trackability is an issue. If a coronary balloon is not tracking, there's no way an angioscope will track. Uh, you know, I think that's very, very important. What's going on, guys? She's okay. So I think right now we're just going with this uh, uh, 2530 balloon in. I know it's going to be big, but I want to take a picture before I go up rail. Yeah, I have. Okay, now I'm going to take it down. Now we also need to switch out this command wire and people find the command to be safe. I, I think it is a safe wire. I just find that I, I am more paranoid and like even more safe wire, like a, uh, like a Sparta core. So I'm gonna take out my command wire. Give me a Sparta core wire, please. Um, because I don't want any hydrophilicity at the end of it. <coughs> Sparta core wire. Yeah, yeah. So Sparta core wire is coming. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is put this card of Sparta core wire in distally and I'm even going to make like a, a big C loop in it uh, and get it in good so you know as much as you can you want to take a few steps to be a little safe so here I know I'm, I'm very nicely deeply into my dorsalis pedis floral and do this uh, Vishal, right. what, what is your opinion on people who are doing intervention primarily through the pedal? I'm curious on what your thoughts are. Um, I mean, their big argument is that they're doing it in the radial and it's mostly cardiologists and they feel that since they're doing it in the radial, they could do it in the pedal. Let's take a DSA shot here. Well, I guess, again, like I was saying before, I mean, usually we DSA go problem? integrate. People have started to do pedal, primary yes. pedal access Inject. because of the availability of the sheets and they want to use sure. a CSI or something as a as an atherectomy device because it goes to smaller lumen. But again, we don't know the distal targets. With the hair, the reconstitution was almost at the DP. So like we had very distal CTO, I don't know how much initial catheter, catheter gain you will get and if you'll be able to cross and put your devices right? through it. So I'm always a little bit uh, apprehensive about going yeah. primary well, pedal we're gonna, we're gonna unless, back, unless the lesion is more proximally and the distal end is is normal then okay you could Go probably up, think about right, pedal yeah, but in these good. long ctos Slow where you don't know proximally it's occluded distally it's where the dorsalis pedis i think an anti-grade up and over axis is much better safer and more reliable as compared to a pedal axis she respira con su boca. Right. so it looks respira, good it's expanding respira, well respira she feels the stretch respira but respira, respira con su boca. Res, respira con su boca. lo siento Respira con su boca, despacio. Respira despacio. Bien, bien. Respira. So what I'm, do <laughs> what I'm doing Slow here pressure. is Dr. Guja is going up to 10 atmospheres, which is nominal. Si, si, entiende, entiende, mamita. Es, es muy importante. Es por, es por su arteria. Show me a higher. So, so you can see here that we're, we're expanding this all the way up. Okay, there seems to be like a little fibrotic area right there. Can you go different view? Is well, it expanded is, well there? I think it's expanded. It's I think expanded. it's just a bubble. It's expanded. Bubble. Oh, it is expanded. Okay. So you know that's, that's an air bubble. So right here we've got, we're just going to leave this up. I think it's important right now with the technique of balloon angioplasty because I think your technique is, is going to really uh, 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 change your outcome in terms of how this works. So what we're doing is we're going to leave this up for at least three minutes um, really, really slowly. Uh, Dr. Guja is going to maintain the pressure uh, or the atmospheres of the balloon around 10. You saw from the, from the picture, can somebody talk to her? You, you saw from the picture here that, that you clearly have a vessel that's, uh, that's around a 3.0 in right. the BP. Now you could say it's probably a 275, but to me it looked more like a 3.0. So, you know, I went with the 3.0, a little aggressive for sure. Um, and I think traditionally people, you know, don't go that high, but I think that's a pretty healthy, robust vessel. So I'm going to leave it up very, very slowly here, and then, and then, and then we're going to go up uh, and do this. No, this is a 3035 or 2530? 2530. 2530. So it's a 2-5 vessel, sorry. So 2-5 balloon is what I was thinking. So now you can see coming back up, you know, she's having pain. So why is she having pain? She's having pain because we're stretching this, this, uh, this vessel out, and we're trying to obviously, you know, get the maximum lumen that we can.
So, Karthik, I mean, how do you choose your, your balloon sizing? I, I, I personally always feel like um, you have to be 2.5, at least at the level of the DP. Uh, I think people underestimate tibial vessels, as you said. Um, your tibial vessels are always, almost, almost always larger than your coronary vessels. If you're using 2.5 in the coronaries, you can definitely use 2.5. The pillars. Proximally, I always dial it with 3O. Yeah. Um, I think proximal uh, tibial vessels are at least 3O always uh, or probably larger. Sometimes even they go to 4O vessels. The, I think the patency of the vessel depends upon the sizing of the balloon. Um, and the, and the, as PK said, prolonged balloon dilatation, I think that works very well. What do you think, Visha? No, I, I completely agree. It's the same sizing. I mean, in this case, we had to upscale from a tour, and you can see if you use a tour balloon, it looks under expanded. And most of the times, eight, where 80 is the dominant vessel, 2.5 minimal distally, and 3.0, 3.5, depending on how, how much it uh, tapers up to a size. But yes, 80s can also go up to 4.0. You won't be surprised that you'll see a 4.0 vessel sitting proximally. Yep. So I guess uh, appropriate, because our primary goal is PTA. Balloon sizing is very important in this case and uh, for its patency, like you correctly said. So, so I think what I'm doing now up. is just going to come back a little bit, right? Yeah. And uh, what we're going to do is come back proximally. Yeah, I think that. For whatever reason, perfect. Karthik likes to go positive when I'm pulling back. Let's go. Let's go up now. <laughs> no, I was so, so to give you Karthik is doing uh, intraluminal and dark trek. Yeah, yeah that's that's I'm, like, I mean, I'm sure that. the audience is like, why are we doing? Why is he going down and up? You know. I am trying and to give you yeah, more see, negative. See, like, I was trying to give him more negative. He was pulling and it was not coming back. So I was trying to give him more negative. So, yeah. So we're going again to 10. And again, you can see we're just going to leave it up very, very, very slowly here. And then, and then try to go ahead and get the most maximum lumen. So Vishal, when do you use a, a scoring balloon like a chocolate? When do you use CSI? When do you use a, a, a directional atherectomy? When do you use jet stream, jet stream atherectomy in these lesions? Well, that's a very good question. I guess the first is... Uh, your personal, I mean, it, it's a combination of personal preference, the one you're used to, and of course the lesions. So if you have like focal calcified lesions, just like islands, like you said, I would probably do either a, a, a directional atherectomy to get that calcium chunks out, or even a scoring balloon to score the vessel and do if everything else is hibernating. If it's a lot of diffuse calcifications, you can choose a jet stream versus CSI depending on how you're going uh, and the sizing available. CSI more in the lower extremities because they come in smaller burst size as well. And then we, we do a PTA. Laser, like you said, in cases where pretty much like unyielding calcification or a long lesion or a cap you can break through, then laser is a great help in below the knee lesions as well. So I guess it's a combination of how the vessel looks, how the wire behaves, like you appropriately said, in this case more of hibernation with few islands and how the balloon, pre dilatation balloon behaved with us. So uh, keeping everything in mind, you can make an educated decision whether you want to do all focal atherectomies, diffuse atherectomy, or atherectomy with PTA. But that's all my- Karthik yourself? How I do. I, um, I, I, never, I almost never use uh, scoring balloons in yeah. below the level of the knee PK. Because uh -huh. if you're using an atherectomy device and uh, scoring balloons, you have to think about a cost factor in this part of the country, no? Right. So that becomes too expensive for, uh, for an intervention. So unless I'm, I have been left with no other, I think with just serial balloon dilatation and uh, your, um, your atherectomy like you just did, I think you should be able to get, well, open any single vessel below yes, yes. the level of the knee. Um, so I almost never use it. So I guess Can now is the moment of truth. So let's see. Okay, no more of us. So Karthik is concerned that we didn't hit the osteum. And that may be true. And you yeah. can see he's right about that. And the balloon is still in the vessel, which again shows nice. that there's less flow. But clearly there's a lot of competitive flow because of the uh, flow being so robust. because of the perineal being robust and, and you have to overcome the uh, the um, you have to overcome the uh, collaterals as well, which will take time. Let's, the vessel let's, itself looks let's great. Go up here, Chief. What's the matter? Okay. Good well, let's go up. Mm -hmm. Go up here. Yeah, 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 but you're 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 undersized, right? So it's fine. Go up. She's still having chest pain. Okay. Okay. Start a nitro drip again. Okay. Titrate it up. Okay. Okay. Down. Down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give some nipride into the vessel, 
walk this out, Ray? Okay, mami, ta finito, huh? We'll give it through the balloon picture. Yeah, we'll just give it, yeah, we'll just. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, walk it out. So we're going to go ahead and give some uh, night pride systemic here through the uh, main, main part and then take two pictures. Um, she's again getting recurrent pain. Her pressure is up again. So we're going to try to control her blood pressure one more time. And, uh, and then no, put it in a 10 cc. And then, okay, can you start a... a what? What? Okay. okay, let's get an EKG machine in here, please. So he's having recurrent pain. So one of the things we're going to do uh, once we take this final picture is do a 12 lead EKG, make sure everything looks good, and then, and then we'll see what's happening here. She also got Plavix on the table, Liz, didn't she? What, did she get Plavix on the table? Yeah, so that could be a two. So let, let's, yeah, yeah, see, okay, a, a flush. Let's go ahead and just get a 12 lead now. We're just gonna take a final picture. Okay, mamita. Beautiful. Okay, keep going. Okay, okay keep flushing, please. Okay. Okay, let's fill it now. Yes, mama, no problem. We're gonna take a picture, I promise. So this is the first time this happened to me. So the, actually, second time that we've actually had a patient having some chest pain while we started this. So we're gonna go ahead and take a last picture here and then, and then move quickly, probably take a look at her coronaries as well. Inject. And there's the, the, the dorsalis pita nice. so beautifully filling. Beautiful. Right, now show me the foot. Yeah, okay. This, okay, let's go ahead and take a final shot of the foot. 12 lead guys. Wow, look at the pre predominant 18 yep, flow. There it is. There it comes. Very nice. Yep. All right. So we're, we're pretty much done with this. So let me come over here. So, so what we're going to do is do a 12 lead EKG. And then, and then, and then we're going to go ahead and see what's going on as far as our heart is concerned. I don't think this is going to be anything serious and blood pressure is high. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that there's nothing. The other thing could be just GI symptoms with the Plavix. So I think in review, I think, I think we were able to show you very, very clearly how to approach these lesions. First, by learning from the angiographic anatomy of, of what you see, by looking at the, not only the angiogram itself, but also for the fluoroscopic clues. The fluoroscopic clues of calcium, analyzing the proximal cap and the distal cap, and then your wire choice. You saw in this case, the wire of choice that we went with was a, was a hydrophilic wire and surprisingly a fielder, which is really more towards just doing um, the, the actual uh, you know, navigation through the fenestrations that we found. You also saw very, very clearly that you had area pockets of occlusion, uh, excuse me, patent, patent vessels or hibernating vessels, followed by pockets of occlusion. Can you, you guys can take the catheter out slowly. Well, of, 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 of followed by uh, pockets of occlusion. So when, when, we transfer, when we went through the areas where you know the vessel was, uh, was, a cl was um, hibernating, when we got to the area when we needed to have a little bit more pushability, a little bit more pointedness, we switched wires to the Fielder XT, which again maintained its hydrophilicity, but I've had a little bit more penetration uh, for us to be able to penetrate through those lesions. Once we got through, you saw us balloon the entire channel of the vessel to be able to expand, expand the vessel, reduce the friction to push, after which we, we, we got to the distal cap, could not crack it despite multiple events. At that stage, we, we went ahead and decided to go ahead and do a, a laser atherectomy followed by prolonged balloon angioplasty with restoration of flow. So I think this is an excellent demonstration of, of a case done in just about an hour of a below knee in a patient with, uh, with critical limb ischemia. You saw that she had no flow to the foot other than the perineal, which is very sluggish. Now we have two vessel runoff to the foot, and obviously she's having other issues that we'll, we'll take a look at now. So I thank you very much for your attention. I thank Dr. Guja, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Singla, and obviously the entire team, Ray, uh, uh, Elizabeth and, um, and uh, Damien and Pablo in this particular case for being of such great help. Um, I'm going to go now and uh, give you a short synopsis on, on uh, the BTK toolbox and the selection of wires. So I'll see you guys soon. But thank you again, Vishal. We're going to sign off from our cath lab and we'll see you next month. I really appreciate it.
Thank you, PK, for a, a great case. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, watching this live case from New York, Mount Sinai. Uh, please do join us for next month, March 28th at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another peripheral uh, case. Uh, you can go to our website, ccslivecases.org, to review all these archived cases from the past. The one from today will be up by the end of the week. Uh, do register for our annual Link Mount Sinai conference scheduled for June uh, 11th through the 13th uh, at New York at Mount Sinai. Uh, again, uh, we'll see you next month, uh, March 28th at 8 o'clock. Till then, have a great month. Thank you.